Well, I'm in awe. I'm sitting here with a gentleman that walked around the earth two hours and 10 minutes. That's unbelievable. Well, it was unbelievable to me at the time. <laughs> I didn't quite, quite get all the way around the second time, but I tried. Gene Cernan is being uh, enshrined tonight at the National Aviation Hall of Fame ceremonies here at the Dayton Convention Center. And Gene, your whole family came, didn't they? I got family and friends that I didn't expect to come. <laughs> you know, it's hard to invite people to your own tea party, and yet I found these people saying, Gene, we want to come. Can we come? And I got two presenters two Navy buddies of mine that I flew with, which really, really represent probably the best part of my aviation career. Well, you've done so many things, and uh, you were on Gemini 10. Gemini 9. Gemini 9, 9. and then you were on Apollo Apollo 10, 10, and that's when we painted that white line in the sky for, for, for Neil and Buzz so that they wouldn't get lost. <laughs> and then we left the bumpy part of the road for them. Is that when you drove the rover around? No, that was Apollo 17. Apollo I went back 17. to the moon after, after Apollo 10. We didn't land on 10. Because uh, you had 73 hours, I think I read, on we the moon. Yeah, you know, a little over three days on a surface oh, moon. I drove oh. a lunar rover and uh, had the experience of knocking a fender off, and there wasn't another car within 250,000 miles. We, uh, we brought uh, Father Jim of uh, Fitz last night to do the invocation, and he said, now how did he knock that fender off? He said, were there potholes on the moon, or, or did he hit a rock? What happened? A little bit of both. I think there are a lot of potholes there, I'll tell you. But 21 miles, did it say? You drove in well, that rover? Yeah, I think it was 20, some 36 kilometers. That's oh. about 20, 25 miles, something oh. like that, and it, it gave us gave us the opportunity to explore regions of the moon from where we landed that we never would have been able to see if we had, if we had to mm. walk. And the valley we landed in, if you can imagine, was about 20 miles long and five miles wide, and it was surrounded by mountains oh. on three sides that were higher than the Grand Canyon is deep, to give you an idea of the mag. Mm. Buzz coined a, frame, he said, uh, a phrase, he said, magnificent desolation, and it truly is. It's awe-inspiring, unbelievable, mm. bland in color, but the Mountains rise beyond your imagination. Last night we were driving home. I looked at the moon and I thought, we were with men that were on the moon. Now, what do you think when you look at the moon? Sometimes I look, uh, I get the question asked a lot, and sometimes uh, I, it's, it's disbelief even to me now. Mm -hmm. I know this happened. I know once you walk on the moon, you can never unwalk. Nobody can ever take that moment away from you. And sometimes I wonder, uh, if that was really me, I finally, after two and a half years, finally finished an autobiography. And once I finished, I decided to read it as a reader instead of a writer. How many times did I read it while I was writing it? And I read it after it was, I saw it on a bookshelf, and I said, maybe I ought to read it myself. And I read that book. I read the experiences of one human being who had some, was blessed with some opportunities. And I wondered who I was reading about. I couldn't believe that that person was me who had those opportunities. But, you know, that's what I try and instill in kids. You just never know. You that's just right. never know what's in store. If you dream and... Uh, you know, you, hang in there. Your book is sold out of Books and Company. You can't get that, it. That's the good news at <laughs> the moment, the, I guess. That's the good news. But no, it's such a thrill to have you and, and Buzz Aldrin here. And there were seven enshrinees there last night at that dinner. It was really a who's who, wasn't it? Well, I tell you, it's, uh, it's special to be, to be enshrined with the kind of people that, uh, that houses the, uh, the historical commitments and accomplishments of those people who came before us. Well, it's special to have you, Gene Cernan. Thank you so much for taking this time. You can get back to rehearsal now. My pleasure being here. Thank you, and God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye now. We'll be right back. What a thrill to be sitting here next to Buzz Aldrin. Oh, I tell you. Buzz, you were just wonderful last night. I enjoyed at the President's Dinner. Yes. You know, that, that's a special place out there where you talk underneath the planes and because you've what been in them. a wonderful place, that oh, is. Oh, yes. isn't that something? Enormous hangar and all that oh, history there. Just yes. wonderful. And, of course, um, Buzz Aldrin, as everybody knows, that tremendous flight um, in J July, about this time of the year. That's right. 1969. Almost when you 31 landed. years. 31 years, 31. Yes, yes. That you were the first humans to land on the moon. Right. Oh, what an experience. But you have had many, many of them, Buzz. But, um, well, I don't want to give up. No, oh, no. I, I, I've never been as busy as I have been, especially in this last year. Isn't yes. that great? Mm -hmm. Well, and I wanted to ask you, too, mm -hmm. you're working on Mars Cycler. 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 Now, tell yes. us about that. Well, um, the term cycler means that it sort of cycles. It, it keeps a pat pattern going. The original cycler uh, was to have something that would go around the sun, swing by the Earth, and then go to Mars, and then come back to Earth and continue doing this. And uh, that I developed about 11, 12 years ago. 
And uh, no one else thought it was possible, but by using gravity assist to change the trajectory, you can do this. And uh, you can get from Earth to Mars in five months and back in five mm. months. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is that uh, there are a few little aspects of it that need trimming up. Like when you leave Mars, it's a fairly high uh, fuel-consuming velocity that your small little interceptor has to do and has to be right on time. So uh, in an effort to decrease the Mars encounter velocities, we have decided to use a semicycler. And we need three of them, it looks like, right now. Mm. But now we can get there in five to six months at very low velocities, very uh, acceptable, very competitive with other ways of doing it. But the thing is that the cycler gets bigger and bigger. It can grow. And uh, when it comes back to the Earth, it doesn't stop. It drops people off. And then it comes back to the Earth in either six or 12 months. That's Ooh. the only time you can come back. Now, who would go on these trips? Well, explorers would go. Explorers. Yes. The cyclers themselves, to me, are direct outgrowth uh, of the initial habitats or hotels that I think need to be put into orbit around the Earth. And we'll probably do one of these just for research and development close to the space station, the International Space Station. So we could use that as a uh, safe haven if anything goes wrong at the space station. And it can do the artificial gravity research, you know, uh, for long trips like going to Mars. Uh, it, it's helpful. It may not be absolutely required, but it's helpful to have artificial gravity, and you can do that by uh, rotating the spacecraft to provide that centrifugal force. And we need to do a lot of research and development, so and all you can these do things. Buzz was, was third in his class at uh, West Point, and he had a doctorate from MIT. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I understood everything you were saying. One thing I wanted to ask yeah. you about your nickname, Buzz, because I have a son, yeah. Buzz, and that's his nickname. You got it from some member of the family, you said? Yes, uh, when I was quite young. My, uh, my older sisters uh, couldn't quite pronounce brother, and so I was <laughs> Buzzer. Buzzer. And, uh, so, you know, after, after my father died, it was just so much easier not to, to have to carry around Edwin E. or Edwin Eugene Buzz. Aldrin Jr., so I, I've legally <laughs> changed that now, so it's my passport and driver's well, license. Well, that's, that's all people know that's you all, by, that's right. is, is Buzz that, Aldrin. That's all I we, know. We could continue talking because you have a wealth of information, but I thank you for taking the time to, to sit and visit with me, Buzz, and I hope you'll come back. Well, we what we need to do in the near future is to get airplanes to look more like rockets and rockets to look more like airplanes so that we can launch without people in them and boost other payloads and then come back and land oh. on a runway and, and reuse things and make them more reliable when we reuse them. And that's the first building block. We eventually get to the, uh, to the Mars cyclers, but there are many intermediate steps. He'll do it. Buzz Aldrin will do it, I'm sure. Thanks again, Buzz. We'll see you tonight.